<laughs> I'm a retired triathlete. <laughs> I've done two Ironmans, and I liked. I, I'm, for lack of better words, an exercise enthusiast. I think that's the best thing we can do for ourselves to maintain some level of youthfulness, even as we're moving on in age. Clearly, I'm not as young as I was 20 years ago. None of us were hard. So it turns out I also I've also experienced a bit. Um, it was five years after I had my own aortic valve replaced and continued to be active. And then uh, literally almost five years to the day, uh, I was on a spin bike and my heart rate started going out of control. And I realized it was an AFib. And so it became an eye opener. I saw my uh, heart rate going up to 160 to 170, which I'll never do when I exercise. So, and then naturally being a physician, I checked my pulse and I could feel it was irregular. And then uh, I tried to uh, cardio by myself with a precordial pump. That didn't work. Getting off the bike and just relaxing uh, allowed my heart to get back into a regular rhythm. I was anxious and somewhat short of breath. I, I, I guess I didn't have chest pain, but I was an more anxious and just didn't feel like myself. And I also know that a lot of patients, as they get older, don't even realize they're native because their rate is so well controlled. And but younger patients for sure don't already fit. I knew every time I went into AFib, I could, it made me anxious. I felt, I wouldn't say short of breath, I just didn't feel right. I, I felt like I was not like in my own skin and just making me more nervous and anxious. So, so me being a regular rhythm, I, I felt more normal. And there were so I couldn't even define what the triggers were to put me in AFib. I guess it was just my heart deciding to decompensate from the uh, surgical pathology. As soon as I developed AFib, um, I was cardioverted, had a TE. At the same time, they realized that I had uh, at least moderate MR at rest, so which meant it was more um, moderate to severe with exercise. So uh, within two months, I had uh, my mitral valve repaired and a uh, surgical um, Cox or maze procedure. I think amiodarone is not a, a good long-term medicine as far as concerned about long-term toxicity for any antiarrhythmics. I think they're a good way of getting a patient back in science rhythm acutely, but ultimately um, more than three to six months patients shouldn't be on um, antiarrhythmics uh, from uh, potential liver toxicity. And also, I, I don't think it does, in my experience, it's uh, it does lead, the side effect protocol does lead to some decrease in um, cardiac function long term. I'm going to speak to the surgeon. I knew, uh, one, I wanted the mitral valve, repair, my mitral valve repair. I also knew that I wanted to have my uh, atrial treated for AFib. And I also wanted my appendage clipped. And we all, the whole team was on the same page. More importantly, uh, we, when, we realized, when I realized I had sleeping in all, there was reason for my atrium to be somewhat under stress. So uh, I realized I didn't want a, a uh, transcatheter ablation, I needed um, surgical ablation. If the surgeon has the left atrium exposed for mitral valve operation, uh, doing a surgical ablation is almost, uh, lack of better words, a gimme, you're right there looking at the atrium. And you have so, many, uh, so much ability to treat it with, whether it's a choir energy source or Radio frequency and energy source, we can treat it at the same time. The assumption that just fixing the mitral valve will lead to uh, being in science for the post op is not a good assumption. Something has to be done. Being in the biz, so to speak, I've been to enough meetings. Uh, the very first thing I wanted with my uh, mitral valve repair is I was going to New York and uh, spoke to one, one of the uh, eminent mitral valve surgeons, Dr. Dave Adams, and uh, I also knew that he does ablation at the same time. So, and I was gonna have, uh, not that I don't trust any local surgeons, it's just sometimes it's easier leaving your uh, local community to have uh, major surgery. So how did I feel after heart surgery and after staying in regular rhythm? I felt 
more confident. I didn't have any shortness of breath. I felt like I could go back to my activities of daily living without worrying about flipping into a fib. And I just felt more comfortable. I felt, even though we're all getting older and we have no choice in that, <laughs> I felt like I was still <laughs> able to uh, be myself without this disability of having AFib or the morbidity of having AFib, I should say. Aside from the typical perioperative pain that patients uh, endure, uh, I felt like I was in sinus. And then the farther I get out from surgery, I was in the hospital for a week after surgery, and then uh, I was stayed locally in New York. And I was in, as far as I can tell, regular rhythm, because at that time I was a little neurotic about constantly checking my pulse. And I could tell if it was a regular, regular. And so I can honestly say that uh, in the five and a half years since surgery, I've been in sinus rhythm uh, the whole time.